Hi guys, so today we're going to be taking and learning how to paint foam marble. Um, I'm going to be using this canvas here, um, but you're going to put your marble on top of whatever you choose to paint. Um, like I said, this is just a cheap little canvas from the Dollar Tree. And you're going to need a paper plate to mix your colors in if you choose to mix your colors, which I'm just doing white, gray, and black. Um, it's just really easy to mix those three together to make the tones that are usually in marble, but you can pick whatever colors you want. Um, I have a sponge here to do a little bit of dabbing. It helps spread out the paint a little bit. Also a big brush. You can use that to do big brush strokes or you can use it to feather out your marble veins that you're going to be making. If you have a small, slightly smaller brush, you can do bigger strokes or you can do tinier um, spreading. And then you have a detail brush that you can also use to feather or you can use it for details. And then of course you have to have a, some type of feather. It needs to be fairly strong because what it is you have to wibble it back and forth like this to make the really deep dark veins of the marble um and unfortunately there's no substitute for a feather you literally need a feather but i mean if you can find one pretty easy and then you just swizzle it around a little bit all right so let's uh get started so um you also need water you're also going to need some paper towels. Um, they'll come in handy in just a little bit. Go ahead and squirt out your um, colors onto your plate. Um, you're probably going to need the most white if you're doing a white-based marble like I am because um, you're going to have to soak your entire canvas and then you're going to have to take and use it to touch up. Um, black or your darkest color is going to be the least that you need because it's just used for a little bit of low lights. You're going to need second most your gray or your mid-tone. That way that you can do a lot of marbling of your um, surface. You're going to use it to do your veins. So first I'm going to cover my entire canvas in white. Um, Honestly, it's easier to do this if you're working on like a surface. I like to do it on like tabletops or countertops. It just works out a little bit better uh, to do furniture or something like that. Canvas has a texture and so it doesn't uh, take very well to marbling. You're still going to get the same effect, but the texture difference is going to be noticeable. Um, but if you're doing a tabletop or something, you'll want to seal it with resin or something so that it doesn't um, get scratched or scuffed off. So now I'm going to mix an even lighter tone of this gray because um, it's just a tiny bit too dark. We'll get to using the actual dark gray in just a second, but you want to start with something lighter because this is all about doing layers. You're going to want to start with your lightest gray and you're going to want to take and pick a direction that all of your veins are going to go. You do not want them intersecting with each other. They need to run fairly parallel even though they're branching off. Think of like lightning. It's going to go basically the same direction. And for this first layer, you're not going to need it to be super like squiggly or anything like that because you're basically going to pat all of this out and it's going to blend in and just make a shadow on the surface. And you're going to keep doing that until it looks nice and soft. It's going to give you a grain line for your marble. And so I'm going to take and do a little bit more in the corners over here. And normally if you're doing a whole big piece like the top of a dresser or something, this is going to be spread out a lot more. But I'm trying to show you that you can do multiple main uh, veins on a small surface. So we're going to do one in this corner as well, but it's going to be very, very close to the corner. All right, so you're going to go in with your slightly darker um, gray, and you're going to basically trace right back over where you just tamped out those lines. And you're going to do the same thing as before. You're actually going to be blending these out as well. Um, you just want to make sure that you're extra um, quick with this because the slower you go, the quicker this stuff dries. And so the more it dries, the harder it is to work and move. Um, but you're going to want to make sure that you're getting this out. Like I said, the whole thing is just layers. You want to make sure that you get all of your layers in there and it's going to slowly build up and turn into marble like you've seen everywhere else before just a little bit more and that one actually dried on me a little bit so I'm going to take some of that lighter gray and I'm actually going to go over the top of it again and that's going to help soften that back up mm, 
Okay, so I'm gonna go in with my little detail brush. I'm gonna pinch the tip of it so all the bristles are in a straight line and get the darkest gray and get all the excess off. And I'm gonna gently just draw in lines over top of the um, veins that I've already done and just darken them up just a little bit. And I'm just kind of barely touching as I'm going and gently dragging and bouncing the brush so that it's a broken line. And then I'm just gonna tap it out a little bit. And you can always take and drag your sponge too to give it more of a streaky look because as we all know, stone is a natural thing, so it doesn't always follow that perfect bouncing motion that we give it. Um, so you want it to be a little bit streaky and everything, you just have to make sure you're following the same grain lines. And so I'm intermittently like touching down as I'm going over these veins. Um, and it's just darkening those small sections as I'm going. And then you just kind of tap it out and do it again. And you keep repeating that until um, we get to the black, which is where you're gonna use your feather. Okay, so um, my beginning part of my vein over here is just a little bit dark, so I'm touching it up with a little bit of white. Um, I should have used a lighter gray instead of the white. Uh, that was my mistake, um, but I'll go back over it with a little bit of gray in just a minute anyway to darken it back up. Um, but that way that it's not so, so bold. So here comes my gray. I'm gonna go back over it just a little bit. That way it's just a little bit more gray instead of that stark white that I started out with. And just blend it out a little bit so it blends back into the um, piece like it's supposed to. All right, so now where you're gonna get your feather, this is honestly the hardest part. I recommend practicing on like a piece of paper or something until you've got it right. Get all of the excess paint off and then you're just gonna touch it down and you're just gonna gently wiggle it back and forth, roll it between your fingers. And it's gonna give you those natural, like thick and light streaks through it that's gonna look like marble. Um, and once you get really good at this, it becomes just a little bit easier to get uh, done. It takes a lot of practice to get it just right. Otherwise it's kinda gonna look like a bunch of squiggly lines. You just wanna Honestly, be a little bit messy with it. Just try to follow the grain lines because if you go outside of it, it'll make it look a little strange. Um, but once you've done that, you're gonna take and uh, grab your brush and you're gonna get some of the gray and get it nice and mixed in there. And then you're gonna wanna get all of your excess out um, because what you're gonna do next is you're just gonna dampen down this entire thing so that it doesn't look so bold. Now, if you want a really bold marble, then you can keep it just like it is, um, but it's just a little bit too, um, too much for me, so I'm gonna actually dull it down just a little bit with this gray. And when you're going over your marble lines, make sure that you're keeping those veins um, Follow the veins with your brush. Um, try not to go outside of it too much. Because you, again, you wanna follow that same flow. And I'm adding in a little bit of gray off to the sides as I'm going to help uh, dim it down just a little bit because you don't want it to be just white and black. You want it to have some gray in there. And like I said, this can get a little bit messy but the end result ends up being worth it. And I made it just a little bit too gray in the side areas, so I'm just lightening up um, a couple of areas, just a little bit, and feathering it on there. brush add in just a couple touches of the black because I ended up erasing most of the black and I did want a couple of small dots where that 
darkness has come to the surface. too much because you don't want to streak black all over your marble that you've just done. Then that's basically it. It's pretty much done. That's your marble. Now again, you can spread this out more. You can do less black. You could cover it in resin um, to make it nice and sturdy, especially if you're going to do the top of a dresser or a table or something like that. You want to make sure it's really, really well covered. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It's um, minimal mess, minimal effort. Just takes a little bit of practice, that's all. So I'll see y'all next time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. And thanks for watching. See you next time.